we had seen a only a diagram we have not read any journal any book any video at that time so this was a similar case at that time uh, a display structure of the fifth metacarpal neck how i do it i have modified it to my uh, the, uh, experience i place the hand on a cm camera i take an incision now i have taken a transverse incision because it gives a good scar the dissection is slightly on the volar aspect of the extensor carpi ulnaris and we take a small owl the entry point must be 8 to 10 mm distal to the cmc joint you make a hole in the medial cortex the fifth metacarpal is the easiest bone for a newcomer to start a 2.5 mm k wire is then used on a t handle to locate the entry like this and then we i take a bent k wire to guide me of how to put the 1 mm wires remember that you have to use only 1 mm wires for intramedullary fixation that's how we check on the cm supine oblique view is very important normally we take pa view because the hand is placed like that 1 mm wires are used the cut end the sharp end is cut and then it is bent about 30 to 45 degrees and the first 5 cm are gently curved the first k wire you bend it in the mid mid shaft to 90 degrees and this you can use it as a handle like this you locate that entry hole and then insert the k wire now this k wire by default will go on the medial cortex you want to turn it onto the lateral cortex but after reduction the k wire is inserted up to fracture site and then we begin our process of close traction manipulation and various maneuvers especially the yas maneuver is used the k wire remember that k wire cannot reduce the displaced fracture you have to reduce it manually and you can see this point here this one 3 inch 3 inches of the k wire is outside 3 inches is inside now remember the hand is on the table in a pa position the you cannot turn the k wire unless you cut it here once you uh, reduce the fracture you will have to cut the k wire otherwise it cannot rotate with your hand obviously it cannot rotate with the t handle also so this k wire is cut like this and then you keep on turning it and pushing it all the time you take occasional cm shots and the k wire is rotated to support the reduction like this you rely upon the p uh, prone oblique view and the supine oblique view also was lateral view will have an overlap you cannot make out where the k wire is going that's how it is done that's the ais maneuver you push the proximal phalanx so that you reduce the metacarpal head dorsally that's the supine oblique view it is very important because many times we are misguided by the prone oblique view the first k wire is located or uh, kept in place and then now very important once you are satisfied with the position of this k wire you cut the k wire here can you see the pointer yeah you can cut the k wire here because it should not rotate again while you are inserting the second and third and fourth wire so on so you push this wire with your hand remember to cut it don't keep the wire bent otherwise it will rotate on its own or rotate while you are putting the other wires inserting the other wires using this handle push it impact it finally be satisfied with the impaction the impaction has to be subchondral the reason for cutting the sharp tip is that the wire should not inadvertently penetrate the uh, articular surface that's the wire which is cut now yeah now it very less likely to rotate further impaction here like this yeah that's impacted subchondrally 
you may use a gentle hammer and tap it further depending on how it looks on the siam now you prepare the second and third and fourth wires depending on the size of the intramedullary canal it is better to insert multiple wires than to insert a single thick wire the second k wire also is prepared the sharp end is cut it is bent now it is difficult to insert the second k wire so difficult to insert it with the hand so use it on a small t handle remember one thing the second k wire cannot go above the first one it has to go underneath the first one and then you can withdraw it as per your need and rotate it try to get a bouquet effect try to see that the end of this k wire is opposite the end of the previous one as i will show you in the siam shot just now it is rotated to your satisfaction see that the k wire supports the maximum quadrants of the uh, metacarpal head like this yeah you can see this that's the k wire which is now located on the other side of the bone subcondral area then you can insert the third k wire the fifth metacarpal is a very wide intramedullary canal up to 5 k wires can be inserted you will find increasing levels of difficulty but with a t handle you can insert three wires definitely very easily now take a final impaction like this yeah that is impacted now the most important step is which is uh, following this is to cut the wires flush with the bone if you cut the wires flush with the bone they will not cause any problems so if you are beginning to do this procedure do it always on the fifth metacarpal because there is no extensor tendon on the outer side there is no nerve for uh, you to damage if the wires are cut longer so wires are cut as close as possible to the bone and that's how you can see that's the extensor carpi ulnaris on the top the wires are resting on the bone they are not outside the bone so this is what we call as a segmental fixation the problems of the segment remain to the segment there is no involvement of the joint or the tendons the skin is sutured i like to give a plaster slab keeping the mp joints in flexion this is a two month post op two slides more and that's with uh, during lockdown i have done this so his all these photographs have come online so messages kvrs must maintain the reduction achieved by traction supine oblique view is very important you remember to use only 1 mm blunt tip wires entry point should be 8 to 10 mm uh, distal and kvr should be cut cut flush to the bone or close to the bone using sharp pointed cutters so this gives us a segmental fixation I thank you all for your thank attention. You. Uh